We're live on Facebook, Real Online Network. Hello. What's popping, everyone? I'm about to share this on my wall. And uh, we're going to get the show started. We have a very, very, very interesting show tonight because tonight is going to be very legendary and very informative. Yes, very, very. I'm excited. You're excited? Yes. You should be because you you have a lot of stories that go along right along with this, right? Like you have, I want to hear, you know, I, I'm not going to spill the beans before we get popping, you know what I'm saying? That ain't going to be right. <laughs> spill the beans. So. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, I am really excited about this interview and um, we're about to get started. I appreciate everyone's patience. Yeah, um, because um, is this your first interview with me? Yes, it's my first interview and I thank you, Real Online Network, for having me as a co-host today. Right. Do you... Uh, and I'm Ricky Jackson, by the way, people who are watching and don't know. Yeah, because we're on multiple feeds, everybody, and everybody may not know who you are, right? Even though they should. And this is Mr. P. Right. Well, they know who I am. Everybody knows who I am. Mm -hmm. Right? And not tell somebody. I'm Mr. Key, <laughs> a.k.a. Ron, a.k.a. Chocolate. Oh, Sexy crazy. chocolate. <laughs> You think I'm sexy chocolate? Not like Reese's chocolate. Okay, well then, just because you brown, I mean peanut butter. <laughs> but, uh, okay, y'all, we are live. I shared it, and I'm going to give y'all some direct attention, because I know you like, you're not even looking at the camera, we and that's we because we are making sure that we capture this historical moment. <laughs> Please like and share this it, yeah you know even if you do it later you know what i'm saying but either way this information is going to be dope so share it on your facebook page right now share it just share it share it in the messenger do all of that please because this show is going to be uh, very very historical i mean this is going to go and down yeah this is going to go down as the largest greatest podcast ever to exist in the entire world because nobody in the entire world can do it like me. <laughs> You're Ricky. I just wanted to say that, you know, I gotta put my two cents up in there. Um, yeah, so. so so we can go ahead and tell y'all because the title tells y'all who we got. We got Andrew Reese's coming to the table for the interview. Mm -hmm. And for those that don't know, I'll just give you a hint. Mm. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this cinematic too. <laughs> watch this, watch this Steven Spielberg intro. <laughs> My favorite candy, yay. She's trying to get you. <laughs> This is my favorite thing, you guys. And how we going to start off is when I do record music and stuff, I always got to have Reese's before I go in there and drop it. I don't know. It just gives me confidence. You going to open them now? The show just getting started, y'all. Yes. Don't ever that have me good. any Reese's and think I'm not going to open them. He's on Instagram, too, over here, y'all. That Look at her, look at her yo. I'm eating one for everybody. She's eating a prop when we ain't started yet. All righty, this is one for you guys, virtually, and then one for me. It's actually more than one. These are Reese's Pieces. Yo, I used to go to school, and I used to put these in my pocket, 
and I be in class trying to eat them, and they just be milking, you know what I'm saying? And I be trying to get them in my mouth beforehand, and then, you know, the teacher like, Mr. Key, you been eating Reese's Pieces? I'm like, no. I got it all over my hands, all over my mouth. It's you know crazy, saying? yeah. But these, these, these is different. These ain't, these ain't pieces. I like all of them, though. Reese's Cups are my favorite. Yeah, no, real, we be fighting. <laughs> we be in the studio, y'all, and for some reason, the uh, Reese's it gives us the. We, we be like we can't the start working. It gives me the adrenaline that I need. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like it's it, Red Bull or something, right? It is. I'm sorry, it's an addiction. Okay, he's waiting. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna bring him on. He, you know, the show starts at eight. I want to make sure that we're giving him, you know, proper time. I know, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm, I'm giving the audience a little bit of time, you know what I'm saying? And I'm giving people a little time to share it. You, they, we, they can hear us over there? Yes, everybody can hear me over here. Just fine. Well, and what's up, you two? I appreciate y'all, you know, supporting Ricky, your path and whatnot, chiming in for her first co-host. She's going to end up trying to take over the show. You know what I'm I saying? You guys, I'm going to be she's gonna take over the show you know what i mean and it's cool because you know i'm letting andrew take over the show today okay okay i'm with that i'm with that okay so um let me get these let me share a little bit more information over here and then we're gonna get it going y'all Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Okay, y'all, I'm so excited. I don't even start eating my candy yet because I'm not trying to get hyper. I'm just, you know, trying to keep the energy going. I hope everybody's had a blessed week so far. This is the Real Online Network. We keep it real. We bring real stories. We like to support the real people that really are making a difference in the world and just, you know, spreading that light and love energy you know yep. and um i'm excited because i'm a co-host today and i like to be the co-host i love the camera ever since i was a kid so. yeah you um you look well on camera you look good as, as, as one of my uh, mentors told me you clean up well <laughs> <laughs> i'm cleaning in a board of hell i'm just joking but yeah for real I really appreciate you having me on Real Online Network because I don't do nothing but deal with the real. So I feel confident about coming from here. Right. So they they didn't nobody that's watching this is like we we're not really here to just watch y'all to y'all say this is about uh bigger things. So let's 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 let them on. Yeah, let's uh let's, let's get to the goodies. Let's get to the goodies. <laughs> is what I would like to say. Oh, look at all. There you go. <laughs> hey, guys. All right. How you doing? Bless. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. No what time is it there? It's uh, 8 o'clock. Um, yes. It's 11 p.m. here. Yeah. We're, we're in North Carolina. Oh, you're in North Carolina. Yeah. yeah. Well, you were out in L.A. before. Yeah, we, you know. Switching <laughs> left and yeah, yeah. traveling left and right, like yeah. you know how you stay on the go. <laughs> well, not lately. We all been in, so got a little muted there. Yeah, I don't know. The sound went somewhere. He zooms. There we go. Sometimes there we go. Zoom. There we go. So, I'll mute in and out when I'm not talking. I'll mute so that uh, I think there's this problem with Zoom. If sometimes it will mute you. Yeah. I think there's too much volume, this, that, and the other. But anyway, yeah. nice to meet everybody. Yeah, I understand it's 11 o'clock out there on the East Coast, 8 on the West. And uh, where I'm at right now, it's 10 o'clock. So okay. Gonna... Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. No doubt. It's very bright where you're at. All that. Uh... <laughs> 
bright colors over there. Yes, <laughs> my favorite color. Yeah, can you check all that out? We got, I got to, yeah. Can you see? Is that Woody? It looks like Woody is over there by the Reese's. No, yeah. well, let's see over here. That's just like a little whiteboard, if you will. Okay. And you got the little uh, magnets and stickers, and you can write on there and whatnot. Uh, wow, there's uh, cool. one of the uh, Reese Racing Team uh, uniforms. That's the pantsuit. Uh, wow. uh, my brother has the top half of that, you know. And you uh, have the bottom. Ooh. Yeah, well, that's only some, some things. Let's see. If I go over this way, you can maybe see my golf bag sitting back there. Oh, oh you got nice. the peanut butter oh, chocolate golf bag. <laughs> and, uh, you be going on the golf, you be going on the golf court like that, bro. Like <laughs> I know they see you living like. So there was this uh, uh golf tournament called the Reese's Cup. All right. Yeah. So that's kind of the theme behind that one. Oh, yeah. Up on the wall, let me show you some stuff up on the wall here. Let's see. If I go right where my finger is pointing right now. Uh -huh. uh, that's a picture of my grandfather, right? Oh, cool. Now, uh, and then out here, uh, let's see if I point over this way, that is a picture of my grandmother. Okay. Oh, wow. Beautiful. And, and this plaque in the middle is a, uh, certificate, a uh, plaque for the induction of my grandfather into the Candy Hall of Fame as an industry wow. player. Wow. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I did stuff. not know the. I did not know they had a candy hall of fame. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is heavy. What huh. year did he get get inducted in, you say? Uh I think that was uh 2009, 2008. Okay. Oh, oh nice. Cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so I wrote uh, the one book uh, Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, The Untold Story in 2008. Oh, and then in 2009, they inducted him to the Candy Hall of Fame. So it was a great honor. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. That was a great push then. Yeah. Right. So, okay, before we get too far, I my first question is, can do you think, and if I, I need to show you my muscles, I can, do you think you can beat me up? Uh, well, because you're, you're asking that question because I'm a martial artist, right? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> people probably on the call have no idea. Uh, yeah, like, you, know, you want to fight? Like, Why is he asking this question <laughs> off the top of his head? Uh, you know, so I started doing martial arts when I was eight years old. That'd be like 1968 that I started doing martial arts, oh. and uh, so I've been doing it for quite some time. I've studied all kinds of different styles of martial arts, nice. um, but you know. What that's what 52 years of doing martial arts wow and, wow. and, and the the simple fact of it is uh you know you could be a 10th degree black belt be the grandmaster in the world anybody can humble you at some point in time when you're not really ready for it you know uh just uh, having a, a nice high degree is great you understand martial arts there's probably a lot of things that go with it uh but I don't go around looking to say to people, you know, oh, I could whip somebody's butt. That's just <laughs> how I even think. I don't even think that way. Right, right. Now, I do study reality-based self-defense style of doing things, right? So I understand mm -hmm. con games. I understand uh, gang dynamics. I understand crime statistics. And, uh, you know, if everything you do is physical, you'll probably mm -hmm. respond with a physical response and you'll probably right. end up in jail and that's only one sixth of what it's all about right so right. there's there's planning and awareness uh there's right. uh, assessing your environment uh, planning the kinds of things that you're going to do and what you would do if somebody was to come out uh right. maybe the things that you would wear clothes things you would bring with you uh but it's also tactical confrontation management so you're going to see somebody probably before they come up on you maybe they might surprise you but mm -hmm. if you can see them you know that's that's a, a time to kind of look for certain signs and symbols right that might be uh, telling uh, and then when they come up and they start talking to you that's a whole another realm of understanding uh, what's called tactical confrontation management right and so if it does get physical you know maybe you try to be a little bit more deceptive uh maybe try to set your legal basis before you go down that path right. but i don't go out <laughs> looking for fights and and i i know that i can be humbled at any time 
right. I, I've, I've, I've trained at Muhammad Ali's training camp up in Orwitzburg, uh, Pennsylvania with wow. DKI karate and so forth. Wow. And uh, yeah. so you meet a lot of people in this world, uh, you know, and you learn that you never judge a book by its cover, right? Amen. Facts. That's real. That's <laughs> real, real. Man, you just said a whole lot. You just said a Reese cup mouthful. <laughs> you know, I know what the funny part of this is? Is uh, do you know what my moniker is? What I go no. by? The Candyman. Oh yeah. The uh -huh. Candyman. Why would I call myself the Candyman? Think about it. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. It's, it's uh, close. Yeah. It's close. But okay. all my techniques, I named them after candy bars. Oh wow! Hold up! Hold up! <laughs> hold up! So your martial this is deep. So your martial art techniques. Is yeah. that what you mean? You named yeah. them after candy bars. Oh yes, absolutely. So okay, let's let's see. Let me try to guess. Let me see. Like like you mean like Kit Kat? Well, what I should say is, uh, let's say I don't necessarily uh, name my techniques after what I say to people because I don't want to get anybody getting mad at me that I use their candy bar or uh, something like that. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Think I'm using copyright infringement. But what I would say is that uh, various techniques remind me of candy. Uh, How's that sound? Uh, okay. reminds, me, reminds me of different candy bars. Like you have what would be called the fast break. Okay, that makes okay. sense. Maybe payday. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> Maybe there's the Reese's peanut butter cups, you know? Right. Oh, he said. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, you got it. Uh, oh, here's a good one. What's the weakest part on the human body? What's the, the weakest part on it? Yeah, if you were going to take down a man, what would be the weak, weakest thing on that man? Oh, no. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> right, right here. It's the fingers. Okay. Really? So I, I named a, a technique. I, I, it reminds me of the, the butterfinger. Oh, the oh, butterfinger. Butter okay, that makes sense. Nice. Oh, yeah. So now, but, but having a little uh, things that remind you, that's yeah. what it does. It reminds you of various techniques and things to kind of make it easier. Uh, it's a fun way. Yeah, yeah it's make it yeah. fun and so forth. You know, and it kind of you know does something yeah. different with it. Different than anybody. man, that is that is a way to teach somebody. Y'all, y'all hear that? Butterfingers. So <laughs> <laughs> you can be, yeah, you can be taken down by a uh, Reese cup. Oh, Butterfinger. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I love that. Yeah, or what you would call it, right? Mm -hmm. Great learning. Oh, yeah, or what you would call it. That's what mm -hmm. mine would be. My technique would be a what you would call it. <laughs> you got to teach me how to do the what you would call it, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to get into, I mean, you, you came on the page like, um, Product you know what? <laughs> Let me show you my golf. Yeah, the cup, the golf bag, the Hall of Fame. Like I didn't know you was gonna throw blows as soon as you stepped on. I scenes. didn't join it already. <laughs> so Here, just, just to kind of give you guys an idea. Okay. I, I didn't show you the room totally. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of turn around here. Oh, this is better oh, than the museum, man. Maybe start to see more things. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that is amazing. That is Mind dope. blowing. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So I'll just kind of show you some, some fun things. This, Yo. Is, Yo. This, this is just one room. <laughs> and the right. colors are just so perfect. You know, I just, yeah. every sense, the colors are so perfect. Give me a second. The here. energy and vibes to the colors. I connect up my power so I don't go into save mode. You got a basketball back there, right? I saw a basketball. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That is dope. So, so how does it feel? I got some of these questions from people wanting me to ask you. You know what I mean? So see, these these some of these questions are coming from people that said ask them this. Mm -hmm. So here's a question. How does it feel to have such a powerful last name that is known across the world? Like you know, your your brand. I put the um, the Reese's thing on my cover, my Facebook cover today, because uh -huh. everywhere I go in every single store, 
you guys' name is, <laughs> is there. And we'll 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 get to the your part of how you know you guys oh, yeah. connected and whatnot. <laughs> but how does that feel knowing that it's everywhere? I'm back. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, I got to watch it. So if, if you start, he stop hearing me, go like this. So I know that it's muted on me. Okay. Uh, but uh, okay. So what's you know, really neat about the name? Yeah, it is a very recognized name, right? Uh, right. <laughs> gosh, it's kind of looked at one of those businesses in the world. Like if you were to have the perfect combination or the perfect product, what is the example of that? And, and they, uh, I, I've heard them use it in universities and, and different places. It's like the perfect canny solution that can, uh, even the comedians and stuff will make jokes about, uh, you know, who owns the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Well, the Reese, Reese, that's Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, right? Yeah. You have cartoon shows that have done spoofs on it and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it does have the brand recognition. And, uh, you know, the candy business is one of those things that, you uh, when you meet people and you talk about it, it's something that puts smile on people's faces. It's not yeah. a negative thing, it's a positive thing, exactly. right? Right. And so, but you know, people don't necessarily associate me when I walk into a place. Uh, it's not like I go around, I tell them, hey, I'm Andy Reese, you know, my, <laughs> my grandfather did this, but they'll eventually learn it. You know, I, I don't necessarily hide it. Right. Uh, but it was kind of cool growing up and it, sometimes you'll get this thing where you walk in and everybody's like don't show up unless you bring peanut butter cups <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i can do that so do but it is kind of fun to kind of go places and uh, uh, i know my brother uh, him and i both have a bunch of memorabilia and, and sometimes we'll wear it like i'm wearing a shirt right now and we have hats and i mean i got everything i've got uh socks pants wow. uh, shirts right. or uh all the the memorabilia you saw pillows blankets right. uh towels uh, right. even, got, even, got the, <laughs> I even got underwear you know yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was in my mind i was like yeah, wait for it wait for it yeah no you got the draw <laughs> do they have Definitely. the bras too <laughs> uh, well, no, uh, I, you know i did see one commercial where this uh, couple came back to the room and uh uh, they were going, uh, having a good old time, and uh, they were wearing something. I wasn't sure quite what it was, but it was pretty <laughs> fun to kind of look at. Right. Uh, oh. We'll take the we'll take the boxes, and we'll take the uh, underwear. Speaking of that, I'm gonna skip ahead to the dress mm -hmm. because um, he said you a dress, and y'all. Yeah. She wore the dress to Fifty Cent's birthday party. Yes, I did. And she, she, it was like uh, Cinderella walked in there because everybody else was dressed normal, and she walks in with the Reese dress on, and everybody's looking like, "Where did you get that from?" And huh. you know, yeah. Somebody was looking pretty hard because somebody stole the dress from me after that, and I don't know who stole it from me. But I missed the dress, and I'm gonna be looking for another one. But it ain't the same because it was directly from you. But like you told me, material things can always come and go. So don't sweat it. Yeah. Well, she was Andrew. She was so sad. Well, I mean, man, I was mad. I was like, man, like trying to find them and whatnot. <laughs> I, you know, I'm not no investigator or nothing. But I was like, we gonna figure this out. <laughs> we are gonna figure this out. What happened now? I'm over to, it now. Yeah. Well, so so your audience, in case they didn't know, so you know, Riki had this uh, this uh, picture that she had posted up on her Facebook page, and of course she had reached out to me that she likes peanut butter cups and all that kind of stuff, and so she showed me this doll that that's an image of her in the doll, and it was wearing this dress, and lo and behold, if you know, obviously I have a pretty big collection of memorabilia. <laughs> Well, guess what I have? I had the exact dress that she had on that doll. I had the exact dress. And so I said to her, well, you know, I can send you that dress if you want. Right? And, oh, if you could send that to me, please do. So I said, you know, it, it was oh, in my closet. You. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's not, it, for me, it was memorabilia type stuff. 
but for you, you got to have fun with it. So I sent it over. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. I did. It, it was, was your birthday. I had a blast. It was my birthday shit. time. It was around her birthday time. Yeah. Yeah. It was the best gift ever. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Okay, so so you guys, that was a new story, and with the that was kind of untold story too. But <laughs> uh, what inspired the untold story? You know, dealing with your family and whatnot. What what made you guys do that? I mean, if, if that. I feel funny just asking that question, but <laughs> you, you understand what I'm trying to ask? Because, um, of course, just what he did is inspiring enough. Right. But I want to know from your perspective, you know, how did that unfold? Yeah, so, you know, obviously, you know, like your earlier question, what was it like mm -hmm. growing up and people asking you, you know, mm -hmm. how you handled that? So, uh Actually, at a very young age, I started writing like little history stories about the, the Reese family and my legacy. And it's kind of funny. My teachers would say, oh, wow, that really sounds like an exciting story. Like it oh, wasn't wow. true. They didn't believe me, you know, but it was, <laughs> it was actually a family legacy. And I told it in a, a kid's way. And it was kind of funny because I would I get very bad scores on my my, my penmanship and, and whatnot. Oh. And then to grow up and actually end up writing a book that gets awards, you know, uh, Rising Star, uh, Publisher's Choice and all that kind of stuff. That was kind of neat to have that happen. But, uh, you know, I had worked on uh, writing the story uh, several times, uh, different kind of history things. And then uh, I had an aunt of mine who, uh, during some of the... Uh, uh, reunions that we'd have family reunions she had wrote up a little short little story about the family and so that became another inspiration that was kind of like hey you know that's key to see all the information about the family and of course all the family members every family member that you talk to oh someday i'm going to write a book about the reese family and everybody's going to do this Right. But nothing would ever happen. Well, you know, when I got up and I started getting of age, you know, I, I'm a person who gets out there and I just do it. So I right. uh, started writing the book. And so I started probably, it was in the, probably about 1995, I started putting it together and I didn't really finish it till 2008 uh, is when I actually published the book. And of course you have to go out there and you have to research it and do all the things you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, make sure it's the right. But think uh, about his his family legacy. All of the things that my grandfather did. Uh, it's not like he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Uh, he yeah, had to you, his way. Yeah, tell, us, tell us a little bit about that. What do you mean he wasn't born with a silver spoon? Yeah, so uh, you know his uh, family when he was was born, he was living out on a a farm basically up in Pennsylvania, a place called well, it's near place called Muddy Creek's Forks, Muddy Creek Forks. Uh, Airville is another place that's not too far away. And, uh, you know, his uh, mother and father, uh, my, his, his father uh, was uh, a reverend of all things. Okay. Uh, and so it's kind of, kind of amazing that this, this house that he was born in ended up being the family for a very, very long time. And uh, he used to go out there and farm the fields and, and whatnot. And of course, back then, everything was horse and buggy and, and whatnot. And then eventually the automobiles came along and he had, uh, on, uh, when he eventually got married, uh, my, my grandmother, Edna Heisen Reese, uh, her family had some grocery stores and uh, did some different things. And so, uh, you know, he got to, get into some automobiles and stuff like that. And he learned about uh, manufacturing and plant operations and whatnot. Uh, and, but he also did dairy uh, operations. He had about 40 cows. Back in those days, uh, you know, you had crops during certain times of year, but wow. what do you do on the off season? How do you make money? Well, you right. do it through dairy operations and whatnot. But he also did things where he raised uh, frogs and he would go down and sell frogs uh, to the different restaurants for frog legs and, and whatnot. Wow. So that was pretty cool. Because back then they delivered milk and stuff. Milk was a high commodity. 
Yes, and that like it was a cash business, right? So that was, was a, yeah. a quick way to get cash uh, during those months when you didn't have the crops and everything. Okay. Yeah. Well, everybody kind of helped everybody, you know. Now in this, in this area, we have this one monument down there that talks about my family relatives. That there was over ten thousand family relatives. Ten thousand. Wow. Uh, in that area. Ten thousand. <laughs> yeah. Wow. The big family. So, yeah. so, so, so the roots, where's the roots from? Is it from Pennsylvania? You guys' roots? Like your family? You ever have people say, you know, they call it Reese's and some people say Reese's and uh, yeah. different <laughs> ways and how, they, well, I'll tell you the secret. The secret uh, is a Welsh name and it was originally spelled R-H-Y-S, pronounced Reese, R-H-Y-S. And so, from from Wales coming here to the United States through Virginia uh, and coming up and, and into the Pennsylvania area. Yeah. Heavy. Wow. Okay. okay. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Uh, yeah, because um, I seen the, uh, oh, Matt, by the way, your brother is in the uh, feed and he definitely pointed out the underwear. <laughs> He's like, underwear too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And he said, Reese fans love taking photos wearing the official the official Reese's NASCAR racing jacket. He said they love taking pictures in that. Yeah, he he likes uh, he goes around and he Those promotes jackets. the brand on a regular basis and uh, uh, hands out candies and uh, he's really has a good time. Uh, you know, he can talk at some point. You know, he'll probably respond on a thing there how when he's walking down the road that. Uh, when people walk by, it just puts a great big, huge smile on their face. And that's that's pretty neat to, to see yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, that is amazing. That's the key. Yeah. Of course, giving, giving them a, a, a candy as well is fun, right? You give them I candy. saw some pictures of yeah. somebody holding the candy with him, um, showing the candy in the picture. Yeah, so um, for 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 people that are tuning in, because we're we're on Facebook and YouTube, and um, for people that's tuning in watching this, tell them the Facebook. Could you tell them the Facebook link so they can know where to follow the untold story and whatnot in the middle? Because I don't want people. Yeah, yeah, so you know, you can basically go to uh, Amazon and any online bookstore and look for Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the Untold Story. But I do have a website uh, that is at www.harryburnett, B U R N E T T, Reese.com or .info, either one. And it will okay. take you to a site. And there is a hard book copy, soft cover, and then there's an ebook version of it. And I'll probably be, uh, not too long from now, I'll come out with another ebook version that will probably be available in the Apple store. And they can just download other, it. Yeah, read other it from their tablet and nice. yeah, put movies and stuff in there. Right, nice. Yeah, because I saw the um, I saw that uh, classic picture on the interview the that you guys did with the. No, that was the. It was like a manufacturing picture. Oh. There was some ladies. Um, can you tell us about that picture? Um, what was that? Uh, that was was that the headquarters? Well, that was actually in the factory. Um, I can tell you about it, or if you want, I can actually show you. Would you like me to show yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. 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 Here, let me show you real quick. I'm going to mute my phone here just so it doesn't. Uh, While you do that, while you do that, we're going to be snacking. Like, this is a movie for us, so. All right, can you see that? Oh my goodness, yes, beautiful. All right, so uh, this is my grandfather here. Here, what I'll do is minimize my picture here since uh, that would be a distraction on the right, but, or I can make it uh, visible so people can see uh, people. Oh. All right, so my grandfather, my grandmother, uh, this is that house that I was telling you about, uh, that's in Pennsylvania that he was born in, right? Now, some of these uh, 
pictures that I could probably, there's a schoolhouse that he went to as a child. It was K-1 wow. through 12. All right. right. Um, and he did a lot of different things. He helped out Milton Hershey with uh, dairy operations uh, probably around uh, 1916 uh, that he went up to Hershey, Pennsylvania. That's he also cow. ran the, wow. the round, round barn there for Milton Hershey. Uh, and of course, back in them days, the family started off pretty small. In this particular I picture, see him right there, your grandfather. And did you say small? <laughs> well, yeah. Small. Well, this That's is this is small. This is 1922. Now, understand, in the they lived in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Uh, and the thing that was really amazing is the house was only 1,800 square foot, and you had 11 kids. My grandfather, wow. my grandmother. They had my grandmother's uh, sister, and then they had two boarders living with them. It was only one bathroom, all right? Wow. So that was wow. at that time. But later on, they ended up having 16 kids. In wow. Total. Okay. For more than 10 years, for more than 10 years, Reese's Fine Chocolates have been made by this one family, this is Pennsylvania. Yeah, so that's uh, that was the 10 year anniversary uh, of Reese's Reese's HB uh, Reese Candy Company, the candy company, HB Reese Candy Company, which was his third company. That was incorporated in 1923. So 10 years later, that's this advertisement. The picture in there, though, was from 1928. And the reason I know it was 1928, because that's the year that Mike my uh, father was born and that's my father sitting on my grandfather's lap and that's his twin brother I who that was. yeah that's his twin brother sitting on my grandmother's lap but he died at eight months oh. of age so uh my dad was born in february 10 months to be october 1928 is the year that this picture had to be taken Right. But that shows uh, all the kids and and that's a, a pretty neat picture to have all the family members in one photo. Yeah, that yeah. is a neat picture. That's a legendary. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of uh, history. So you were talking about the factory. So, you know, here's some pictures of the factory. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So there's some pictures here. And, and of course, you know, I could put it in big screen mode. Uh, Man, no can no no uh no robots, no cell phones, mm -hmm. no nothing doing it for you. Then they're putting it work. Yes. Yeah, if that makes uh, any sense. So right there is my grandfather standing in the background. If you can see my cursor mousing over it. Man. Uh, yeah. And so if I was to go down a little bit further, you can see it was it was all women working. Oh, well, you had men too, but you know, you had women working at the tables doing the coating and uh, brushing it over, making sure that you had a, a certain thickness on there. Now, my Thank brother, you who you see on there, there's my brother, and there's oh, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's wearing that's, that, that's, uh, that's Brad, right? That mm -hmm. is Bradley there. Yeah. That's Brad. And uh, so, my, my father, uh, you know, they had a in 1935 uh, was a really good year. Uh, that was a year that they purchased a, a fishing lodge down in Wichita, Virginia, which is now a marine, uh, a university for marine science. And so that picture that you just saw a second ago with my brother, that's mm -hmm. the fishing lodge right behind us. Wow. Okay, can you do that again? <laughs> can you do a replay real quick? Let's see that again. Yeah, so here's the uh, fishing lodge back in the day, all right? And we had a porch and everything. Right. And you can see the size of the trees. Right. And this is my cousin Susie, I believe, is, is who that is. So it was no air conditioner, Brad said, in the chocolate? Yeah, no, back in those days, they didn't really have air conditioning that I know of. They, you know, maybe it was the breeze, right? Uh, but you know, this is now, in this picture, this was all dorms for the students to stay in, which was kind oh, of neat. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Brad said, keep your picture while you talk, please. Yeah. <laughs> That's just like a brother, right? <laughs> Look, your brother's giving you instructions. He's like, hold the picture steady while you're talking. <laughs> yeah. And so now here's pictures of people, like, uh, there were so many people who would want to go out fishing with them. 
And, and all wow. the employees in the company, uh, when they wanted to take vacation, they could go down there to that lodge and stay there for free, and they could go out on the boat. I think they charge like a dollar a day, uh, which oh. is not very much money for when you have food, you got used to the boat and all that stuff. So uh, there'd be a lot of people on the boat. There'd be people on the dinghy floating behind. They would go fishing. Uh, that was pretty cool stuff there. Uh, here's a picture of the boat. It was not like a super big boat, right? Pretty modest, humble, right? That's pretty uh, big. Then you got to think of the time too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah, you can tell they were having a good time. Oh, yes. Now, uh, <laughs> now, as far as like the, the factory being built, here's some pictures of the factory being built over the different years, oh, wow. you know, different views of it. And uh, here you can see the logo yeah. going up on the building. And uh, see it right the, there in the, the back. Building, it was built. And there's a picture of it, fully built. In November, no, November, so. it was hold on, hold on, hold on. So it was built in November, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, they Completed started back in 1956, 56, uh, you know, or maybe even sooner than that, but they finished it, it was completed November 30th, 1957. Give it up for my birthday month, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this was the actually his uh. He first started off building, you know, doing candies in the basement of his house. He did it in other places uh, throughout the town. Uh, right. But then he built a factory at uh, 205, 203 Caracas Avenue in Hershey, Pennsylvania, which is only maybe about two, three blocks away from where this building's at. This is on what's called Reese Avenue. Um, and it's a little bit bigger today, but it was pretty cool seeing some of the entertainment that they put on when they did the grand opening. Oh, that's what, oh, wow. Here's a picture of my father on the right and my uncles and my grandmother. Uh, but my grandfather, he died in, in 56. So he didn't get to see the second, you know, the big factory there get finished, uh, wow. which is sad. But, you know, the, the, the brothers took over and managed the business. You, I think some of these pictures are really amazing because when you wow. look at them, look at how the people are dressed. Nice yeah. and clean, you know. Right. Uh, some of the pictures right. you'll see them in bobby socks. Now, as a kid, these things here, they look like great big huge bread pans, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they would hold they would hold peanut butter. But uh I would go into the factory and they would have the rejects sitting in these bins. And oh. uh, all of us kids, there was five in my immediate family, my brother, <laughs> three sisters, and we would we would literally just dip our shirts into these bins and have hundreds and hundreds of peanut butter cups. And we'd get in that car. And by the time we got home, they're pretty much all gone. And <laughs> about, just think about the uh, sugar buzz that us kids, we must have been bouncing off the walls. Bounce That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. A little bit too. Yeah, you know, so there was a <laughs> right. Yeah, so when you look at some of these pictures, it's pretty cool. You know, you see the machines, you know, with the peanut butter cups coming out. Uh, here's yeah. another neat machine, you know, showing the peanut butter being dropped in there through an extruder. And uh, but look at this one. Look at all these 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 shoes, the hats, and how nice and clean the operation is. Yeah, uh, yeah look like but, nurses. Yeah, yeah, look, yeah, it looked like they operate. They're doctoring up the chocolate and stuff, yeah. you know. Yeah, you know, here we are it's today. You got, you got Reese's all around the world. You know, there's factories, yeah. in a lot of places today. Uh, you know, I told you that my grandfather was inducted into the Candy Hall of Fame. This is when he yeah. was inducted. So that's oh, wow. pretty cool. Yeah, uh, it was an honor to be there and to make that happen. And uh, the book helped make that happen. Wow. And, uh, it's you amazing. That, uh, they have it in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, they have it in uh, New York City, Times Square. We're and, going uh, there. And I'm sure my oh, brother will chime in on the network we, there. We, if you ask my brother, he'll probably put a bunch of other places that they have it. Yeah. Uh, but to go in some of these stores and, and see the smiles on everybody's faces. Man, it's yeah. beautiful. It really is. Yeah, that is nice. That is dope. Wow. Yeah, a lot of hard work and a lot of smiles. Whoa, whoa, whoa. let's look at the sales. <laughs> <laughs> Reese's at the top. 
Of course. <laughs> oh. Do not mute the phone now. <laughs> Automation will allow the sales of Reese's to double every year. Wow. That's what Brad said? Yes. Okay. Can you hear us? Okay. Brad said he did live long enough to see the start of construction of the new paint. Okay. The new plant. I'm sorry, plant. I'm looking mm -hmm. from your screen. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And he said something else. I don't know. Yeah. Social engineering red flags. Well, you know, so I'm a security professional. This is what I do for a living. Okay. <laughs> so, the good uh, stuff, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So nice. I'll stop sharing at this point. We'll we'll go back to the screens. Okay. okay. Thank you. Want. We appreciate that. that was Man, amazing. that was like a, a virtual museum just now. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I feel like you know. I feel like I was in a little uh, documentary I theater. I was over here in like a whole other land. Yeah, narration <laughs> and everything going. Okay, that was dope. That was super dope. I, I appreciate this so yes. much. I just want you to know that. I, I, I thought, too. <laughs> yeah, you definitely, because from, I mean, from the very first start of um, us liking the Reese's uh -huh. and, and just being actual fans of Reese's, like we're, you gotta understand, before we met you, <laughs> we were literally going to the studio and we're like, did you get the Reese cups? Yeah, I can't record without. <laughs> we can't record if we don't get the Reese cups. <laughs> so we would stop, go get the Reese cups before we would start a, a session or record or anything. So um, when you actually responded to us on, uh, and, and you started showing Ricky love on the Facebook, man, we was by her like, yo, it don't get no better. This we got we recording our music. We got the Reese cup popping. And then he seen blowing my mind away See, when he doing the yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, you fine. Cause that's exactly what I was leading to. Singing, you blew my mind away. I was so like, wow. So we thinking it can't get no sweeter. <laughs> and then here you come with Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> so I yeah, said, uh, that, what that was that song? Uh, what was the Sammy Davis Jr. song? Yeah, it's uh, Candyman. 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 It was called Candyman. Mm -hmm, Candyman. Yeah, yeah. So. The thing that, uh, that was a fun song to do because of the candy business. Yeah. And then there was another one, What a Wonderful World by uh, Louis Armstrong. Yeah, you killed and, that one. Yeah. And uh, that was my sister's favorite song. She would actually start crying whenever I sang that song. Oh, oh yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, I was, um, your karaoke's, man, they'd be off the chain. I was, it just, it, it threw me for a curve because I didn't know that he was an artist or a tad, a talent. <laughs> I did. Yeah, like, you can, you can sing, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, can't too many people touch uh, Sammy Davis. They'll be scared know, to do right? it. Because Sammy was known for his impressions and whatnot. You know, he could do everybody. Uh, Sammy was like a, a, a ridiculous right. talent back in the day. So yeah. when, I, when I do uh, uh, Louis Armstrong, I do it in his voice as well. All right. Yeah, so, he know how to do it. Yeah, he, yeah. yeah. And I'll do uh, uh, Eric Clampton. I'll, you know, I do uh, Brooks and Dunn. I even do uh, Sweet Dreams are made of this by the Eurythmics. Oh, okay. Oh, I like that song. Because Sweet, Sweet Dreams. Dreams, you know, you think of candy, yeah. right? Oh, I, I, you know, I, I obviously I know what the song is all about, right? <laughs> <laughs> because it's you know, like Sweet Dreams, and I try to make a candy spin off of it. And have to, um, <laughs> right. Yeah. All that peanut butter, all that peanut butter you ate as a kid, you're gonna turn everything into candy. <laughs> but yeah. you know what? This is the karate cup chop. <laughs> yeah. Why yeah, not? Man. Right? You gotta have fun with it, right? You do. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So, um, when you were a kid, what did you, if you, if you can remember, growing up? Not based on what you're doing now, but when you, your imagination was just wild. What did you say you wanted to be? Like, what was your like when I grow up, I want to. When you were younger, uh, well, so like I, I was talking about how I started doing martial arts when I was eight years old, right, 1968. Right. Uh, yeah, but you know, so my my father had a lot of different businesses. Uh, we actually did a merger of the Reese H B Reese Candy Company with Hershey Foods back in 1963. All right, so. Uh, my father went off and started doing some other ventures. And, uh, he did some things up in Niagara Falls, Ontario, 
uh, he built a tower called the Skylon Tower. You ever hear of the Skylon Tower? Uh huh. Yeah, I've heard. Yeah, of it. so the, the top of it's in the shape of a peanut butter cup. If you've never I ever didn't know noticed, that. yeah. I'm talking about so, this keeps boom, 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 wow. boom. <laughs> so anyway, history yeah. here, you know? Like. Yeah. So they had over 60 stores in the base of the building, all right? And uh, they had restaurants. Uh, he had some hotels and various things, motels. And so uh, as I was growing up, I had to work in the different candy or the different uh, operations that we had. But I didn't get paid for that, all right? Okay. But there's times in our lives where we lived in a one room efficiency and we lived a very tight, meager uh, budget, right? Wow. And then there's other times where we we bought this house. Uh, I think we paid like uh, 60 grand, 50, 60 grand for this house. Mm -hmm. And we ended up uh, going in there and building it out and doing whatnot. And uh, by the time we were done, it was about 35,000 square foot home. You know, oh, wow. And, pretty nice size home with an indoor pool. And, and so, you know, I'm kind of, I've lived a life where I lived in really meager tight means. And then there's other times where it was, you know, pretty neat to be in a big place like that, but I didn't get paid for the work I did. Now, if I needed money, my dad might give me a couple bucks to go see a movie or whatnot, or tell me to put something on the tab and he'd take care of it later if I wanted something to eat. But right. uh, as far as working, I was kind of expected to go work in the business. And I started out doing security at the Skyline. And I'd be up in the ventilation ducts watching the people down below. I'm not talking about when I was like maybe 14 years old. Uh -huh. And so I would be up in the ventilation ducts looking down at the people. And then I would radio down to people that, hey, I see somebody stealing. And then they <laughs> do that. <Wow>. So, <laughs> And, so and then I got into doing uh, a security guard or a bodyguard type stuff. Uh, right. He had a concert hall. And so you had Tiny Tim, you had Chubby Checker, the Platters, the Stampeders. You had all these people coming into the concerts. And I would be there helping with security operations. And I remember Chubby Checker, after his one concert, we went back to the dressing room. And there was all these girls outside the door. And uh, he's like, Andy, can you take my shirt off? I need help. And so <laughs> he leaned over and I pulled off his shirt. Of course, it was sopping wet. <laughs> all, the, all, right. all the girls were screaming outside. He goes, just throw it out to the door to the girls. And boy, did they go nuts for the <laughs> but, uh, Yeah, so I did martial arts for quite some time. And uh, I actually joined the military uh, when I was 17. And, uh, you know, I've been doing security basically my whole life at some level. Yeah whether it be physical security, whether it's uh, loss prevention. Uh, and of course, when I went in the Navy, I started learning about computers and mainframes and intelligence and all these different things. It's been a career. I went to the Navy for my career. So you're like a VC warrior. Uh... <laughs> and you have a karate <laughs> outfit too that your brother said with Candyman features that he said you should show us as well. Oh, you do? Uh, well, I got all that tucked away. <laughs> have to you go say it's tucked it. away, Brad. We're going to so. we're gonna have to do this again. <laughs> I tried, Brad. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I have, uh, I actually have Samurai Warrior, uh, you know. Uh, I'm, done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I know I cut you off because it's getting scary. You got Samurai Warrior, what? Uh, the whole uh, warrior outfit, the, the full samurai outfit, uh, full wow. size, human size warrior. Wow. I, I even got a full size, uh, life size skeleton, you know, uh, hanging in my closet, you know. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Oh, what, yeah. What uh, so, all my students, when I teach martial arts, they got to learn all the bones. Okay. You got to learn all the bones, what they are, insertion, oh. origin points. You got to learn all the muscles. Uh, you know, you have to learn everything about the body systems, the the nerve points, and so forth. So I specialize in in pressure points and uh, things that you can use. The things that I would call multipliers. It makes it uh, enables you to be more effective in your techniques and what you do. And if you can understand the body and how it's made up, uh, it, it becomes what you would call no mind. You don't necessarily have to think about it so much anymore because your knowledge of it is such that you understand how the body works and you, you know how to disassemble Johnny Five. 
Exactly. Well, hold on. You know how to dis you know how to do what? what was the last part? Well, remember the movie Johnny Five? Yeah. Yeah, you know how to oh, yeah, Johnny, Johnny Five. Five. You don't know about Johnny Five. I do. <laughs> Just Johnny Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> She said, Don't grow up in different generations, you know. I'm gonna make her watch Johnny Five just because she, you don't know about Johnny Five. Yeah, I said yeah, see, that's why history is important to give her that nostalgia because you got the, yeah, because if yeah, you can, well, uh, this yeah, so, you bad. You know, I've been doing martial arts for quite some time, so you know, mm. my understanding is probably a little bit different than probably the average person that's out there. But so um, teaching me a lot already. So, so. <laughs> the musical stylings of, uh, okay, what? Sh okay, so you can't. You don't, you don't have the karate suit. I'm just keeping up with Brad because he's dropping in a lot of hidden jewels. He says, oh, is he, is he showing pictures of stuff? Can't be brand in Canada too. <laughs> yeah, yeah so said, I have them on the back of the uniform. It says Candyman, and on the front I have the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Uh, I have different logos and stuff that I have here. I'll, you know, I can, uh, I'll show the screen again here. Here we go. Oh, nice. Uh, Thank so, you, Brad. We, you know what I'm saying? He's showing us more. And are the martial you. arts fighting in the movies fake? Huh? They, <laughs> well, they're, they're uh, scripted, right? They're, uh, you know, most of those guys that you see in the movies are actually really, really good martial artists. They're oh, really, okay. they are, they are probably, you know, the cream of the crop when they're doing stuff. Uh, that stuff is not easy. So, right. Uh, you know, Jackie Chan and all those guys, uh, they're all very good. Big skill. Yes. Yeah. Never, uh, like I say, uh, just because they're in the movies, don't assume that you're just strictly an actor. Uh, and, and there's a lot of people that are probably going, I don't do movies like that. I haven't done any movies. Uh -huh. But you know, if uh, Hollywood wants to call me up and they want to, I own the rights and everything to the, publici the, to the rights of publicity for my grandfather. So if, if we want to do a movie about my grandfather, if somebody in Hollywood was able to do it, let's do a movie. And, and you know, I maybe know. even the. We can even involve Hershey Corporation. We can do right. a combination of Reese's and, and Hershey and all that kind of stuff if they, if they would be willing to do that. Exactly. Uh, we need it. Yeah, that'd be need. cool if that could happen, right? But uh, right. I don't speak for Hershey. I, you know, uh, I want to make sure that that's clear for everybody here that, uh, you know, my name is Andy Reese. I, I am I'm not an employee of Hershey. I don't represent Hershey. I don't right. represent the Reese candy company uh i i am uh, the grandson of harry burnett reese you know we're descendants from the guy who who started the, the reese's peanut butter cup candy you know he founded the company and so forth he had two candy companies before he started the hb reese he had the r and r candy company and the superior confectionery candy company was the other one uh and so there was a lot of different things that he did in his life Right. Were the were the other two companies were they uh, chocolate based candies as well? Uh, yes, they were. Yes, yeah, they were. Yeah, but they weren't in Hershey. They were over in a place called Hummelstown, Pennsylvania. And oh. uh, so, if anybody was wondering, you know, when I moved back to the area, I actually lived in Hummelstown, and I did that as a, a thing towards my grandfather, because that's where he started all his operations was in Hummelstown, uh, okay. his first companies. Okay, and, and in this in this book, without telling them too much, because um, I want them to read the book, and you know, and I want them to tune into the book for themselves. So I don't want to do no spoiler alerts, but what can they expect from the book? Kenny, hold on, Kenny Rogers and Grand Funk Railroad. What does that mean, Brad? <laughs> Kenny Rogers and Grand Funk Railroad. That I don't must know. Be I mean, I do a lot of different songs. I mean, uh, I do a lot of, uh, you know, Three Dog Night. I, you know, I do a lot of different things. And and my brother does a lot of nostalgia stuff. So he, he okay. does karaoke singing as well. I guess the whole family. He does awesome. Yeah, I think it's a little time delay on Brad's post. Yeah, maybe. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. But uh, Reese's is now the number one selling candy brand in Canada, too. So uh, it's international, of course. I think the United States, they do something like 2 billion just on the one brand itself. Wow. Wow. That's a lot. Okay. So I saw him share something this morning about the 
relief, like Reese's relief thing, like helping. Oh yeah, ask him about that. That's a good question. What is it? I, I, it was I a question. About the relief. I saw a post about the um, Reese's, you know, behind the relief. They put the one million. Oh, that was, yeah. So uh, basically Hershey put a million dollars. Okay, Hershey. Okay. So, you know, uh, at first I heard it was Reese's and then I found out that it was Hershey. You no, know, actually they're one in the same company at this moment. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, just wanted to make sure that I gave credit where the credit was due. Since it wasn't Reese's, I took the Reese one down. Right. So so what can they expect in the book? Oh, he it's, brought all his chocolate from Hershey's is what Brad was saying. He brought all of his chocolates from Hershey's. He's talking about originally. So originally he brought the chocolates from Hershey? Well, so Hershey's biggest two clients was Reese's and M&M Candy Company, Murray's and Mars. And what's really kind of neat is if you go to Hershey, Pennsylvania, and you go up to the cemetery where Milton Hershey, you know, everybody sees this great big gravestone of um, Milton Hershey, but what you don't realize, off to the right is Murray and Mars, and off to the left is the Reese family. I mean, right. they're all up there as well, but people, you know, they get so focused on Milton Hershey, they don't realize there's two other candy companies represented in that. <laughs> so, I feel you. <laughs> But, well, to uh, be honest, and this is no diss to Hershey because thanks to them, you know, we got this. But to be honest, Hershey doesn't stick in my mind, even though I had some Hershey K Swisses. But Hershey <laughs> doesn't uh, stick in my mind like the Reese's. No. Reese's is like the name and the color. I just love it. It's more that. brighter and, you know, I don't know. It's just fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it has some kind of energy to it. Some kind of, I can't. So in the book, I can't explain it, to be honest. I just know it, ever since I was a kid and as a grown man, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the colors and everything gives me some kind of like you know, and it tastes great. positive energy. Too. So when you when you walk into a store, you can find it real quick. Is that what you're saying? That you yes. just have, oh, there it is right there. You just look for that orange. Yeah. Right there. Pop, yep. there it is. Yeah. Even when you're At trying to time. stay away from eating and take a break, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's right there. So, <laughs> so um when they when they read this book what are what are, without spoiler alerts what are they gonna get from it what are they gonna you know take well, away well i say what they'll learn from it is that uh, people aren't born with a with a silver spoon in their mouth and they they have to earn their way there to to build something like that up and you have to realize that this guy uh did all this you know, just as World War One was underway, uh, then you had the Great Depression, uh, you know, and then you had, well, you had the Warren Twenties and then you had the Great Depression and then you went into World War Two. Uh, so there's a lot of things that happened like sugar rationing, uh, you know, the, the uh, American uh, things were going through a revolution of uh, in, in industry revolution you know changing the industries and whatnot so there was a lot of stuff happening and uh so with 16 kids and if you read the book you realize how much he moved he had to move his family and how many times he did it and what it took for him to get there a handful and you know what nothing you know behind every man's a good woman all right so you know think about you know my grandmother and all her being there and the the family members who helped out the business and uh you know he made some good solid relationships with uh people around him yeah. Right? so yeah so 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 they that's not only are they going to get the understanding of history as a part of the family they're going to actually you guys are going to actually get you know like you said the the whole what was going on during the war times so kind of what we're dealing with right now to be right. honest because to be able to survive that um and, and to be everywhere now you mm -hmm. know what i mean that's actually amazing and then um because i'm an entrepreneur she's an entrepreneur and we're in a digital era so it's kind of like a digital revolution taking yeah. place similar to what he went through with the rise of you know what he had to get through with the rise of reese's so that's gonna be dope to be able to put into a, a audio book yes, as far as I'm, and a movie like that somebody can learn so much from that yes especially how to survive especially and then a successful company on top of that from the yeah. ground up 
built, you know, and all that. That's, that's definitely a... You know, there was a time there where he used to take the, the peanut butter and he would, in the basement, roll it into a ball. And then they would dip it in the chocolate. And then they would roll it in tinfoil. And the amazing part is the kids would go sell it to the people coming out of the Hershey factory. And mm -hmm. Milton Hershey would come out and buy it and all that stuff too. Right. So, you know, he didn't have any problem with it because it was, everybody was using his chocolates. I mean, Milton Hershey was about selling chocolate. Right. Can't, <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, there was all, it was all good. Uh, and of course, you know, my grandfather probably what's different in a lot of things that my grandfather did is he did everything on consignment. So he had to float it all to all the stores. Oh. Oh. So he was putting money out there and didn't get paid until the product sold. Then he was a risk did. taker. Yeah. So, so, so to all you guys that's tuning in and watching this, all you entrepreneurs out there, one of the main lessons that I'm learning, uh -huh. I, I already know this, but the reinforcement, because sometimes you, you, know, you question and you need that wisdom, is that you have to do the work. You have to. You know, if, if you put in that work, because all throughout everything you're showing me from the pictures, to the stories the main thing that i'm seeing andrew is the ambition and the integrity is very high mm -hmm. to have that many children in the house and to have to get through wars and depression and stick together, stick together and have one you said you had one bathroom <laughs> with all of it, that by itself we need to learn how to do that because i mean you know we've been in those situations one bathroom. Man. I would think the chores know, around you know, the house got you know, done. <laughs> if you think of all the chores, <laughs> the chores around the house, you know, there was probably a nice big chore list of what everybody had to do. But I right. remember stories about, you know, people talking how he'd come home, he'd have the smell of bread and cookies and different things. So there was always stuff cooking somewhere. Um, and of course, you know, the kids in the neighborhood would uh, play games outside the factory and they'd do a thing wow. on purpose where they throw their baseball into the factory and act like they were running in to get their baseball. <laughs> but what they were doing is going in there getting candy. and they come <laughs> uh, right. a, lot, a lot of things like that. But of course, you wow. know, today, today you have a lot of health and uh, sanitary standards. That, you know, you, it's all very tightly controlled and, and whatnot. And it was controlled back then too, right? I can but, tell it back yeah, then, yeah. the structure and the cleanness of everybody and stuff. Yeah, the uniforms. Yeah, the Because they have, you know what was deep? White. With chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> to have on white uniforms while making chocolate and peanut butter says a lot about the cleanliness of mm -hmm. your company. And wow, that's... Yeah. That's heavy, man. Like, well, here's the thing. Today at McDonald's, they have, you know, the McDonald's colors is not even pure white, and they be having ketchup, mustard, <laughs> <laughs> pickle juice. It's not looking that clean. You guys had chocolate. Okay. Yeah, that's what I really like about those pictures. Is you look and you see the cleanliness, just how clean everything was, and, and how everybody yeah. dressed. Uh, you know, I know that's right. It's eye opening, right? Yeah. yeah. And of course, uh, you know, if you ever watch the movies from the days gone back in the 20s and everything, you know, having wrote a, a history book, if you will, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. To me, it's amazing when you look at it, everybody back then had suits, you know, three-piece suits, they had ties, mm -hmm. they all had hats. You don't see that anymore. Right? No. You know, no, we're, we're kind of laid back, kind of different dress and different style, yeah. this and the other. Yeah. But they were very, you know, prim and proper, and, and they had a, a dress code. Dapper. Things back then, right. Yeah, they were right. very da dapper. They, yeah. They, yeah. they didn't have air conditioning. You know, think about back in the day when they're doing the peanut butter cups, uh, you had things that you did in the wintertime, because in the summertime, it'd be too hot. Right. So, so in the summertime, you would switch operations from doing the peanut butter cups to something like uh, doing canning for vegetables and whatnot. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So there's, you know, those. So the season change, they had to change, adjust with the season. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then there's uh, things that as you're going through the factory, you got to upgrade things, come up with new. Uh, At least they have solved issues and problems and stuff. And yeah. Brad said that he would be tired and fall right to sleep when you he get home on the couch because he'd be so tired on his favorite chair. And he said he said that he believed in he said that 
H.B. Reese believed in himself when others don't didn't. Mm -hmm. So, can you elaborate on that? Like, what evidently people didn't believe he was gonna do it. Like, because think about it, to try yeah, to tell someone. To I don't know if he had that thought. Did he have the thought of saying, you know, I'm gonna be the largest uh, at the top. I'm gonna be in the Candy Hall of Fame. You no, know, I, he, you know, he he was very humble kind of guy so you know outside the house and here let me show you a picture of caracas avenue uh let me kind of go back here brad uh, you're so good brad because you get him going this yeah. is <laughs> teamwork brad he starts showing more stuff when, when you uh drop lines so we'll yeah. keep it going oh i'm mute a second okay okay um. look at that by the way, that's a that's the Skyline Tower. By the way, uh, Skyline. That's with the Reese cup on the top. Correct. <laughs> Look at that. Shit is crazy. Oh wow. You see it up there. That the top is right large. There. Yeah, I see it up there at the top. That's crazy. I didn't even know it was a Reese. All right. Is Reese so, the Nike of candy? So this was <laughs> this was his uh, first major factory. This is. 203 and 205 Caracas Avenue, right there. Let me put it in full view here. It goes slideshow, current. Uh, so, you know, right here, uh, maybe there is a picture even earlier than this one. Let me see if I got one that's even earlier than that. Oh, wow. Um, that's now, wow. it's probably the earliest one I've got on this series. I mean, I have other ones. I mean, I got uh, a lot of, yeah. a lot of photos, but uh, on that particular one. Okay. And, and it was basically, you had a little space in between, but this was a house for all 16 lived in there. And then this was the factory and then they built onto the back of it. So this is. So it's the, the house, house on the yeah. left is this here. And then they ended up having that factory built onto the back of it as well. And so the Reese's main factory now is kind of off to the left here, just down the road uh, from that, that building. Nice, nice. So, so yeah, nothing's new under the sun. The, you hear people today, when we were out in California, it was like, this is a live workspace. No, that is a live <laughs> workspace. <laughs> yeah, you guys are chilling. This is a whole other live work situation. That's it. Wow. What is that? All right. So no, this is uh this is before they built onto the back. The first yeah. factory. Okay. Yeah, this is uh before they built onto the back of it. So it shows the two different buildings. So here was the factory and then this was the house. Oh wow. So when he had the eleven kids and then as they started to get more family members, they ended up moving into this house. Okay. Cool. And this is kind of cool. Uh you know, they give uh these little cars that we had built over the years. Um, I'm looking around. I, I have them around here somewhere. Uh, but you, cars? you got this. Yeah, see the little the old cars that's in the picture. Oh, okay. Truck right there. Um, yes. Around my, my room around here somewhere. I've got the truck truck here somewhere. Um, what, what do you mean you got the truck in your living room? What do you mean? Well, I got a replica, like a little miniature, right? Oh, oh. like a Hot Wheel. Oh yeah, like one of those little box cars and, nice. and whatnot. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wow. So that's pretty cool stuff. I mean, I've got some pretty cool memorabilia. I've got some old, you know, original boxes uh, from oh, the wow. first boxes that, that they came out with for making candies and everything. Uh, that's pretty wow. cool having that to show people. Yeah, um, that is dope. This dope. is a here's a picture from 1935. Uh, uh, this was the year that he ended up burning all the mortgages and everything. So everything was paid off. That was oh. that's what this was. It was a celebration for having uh, everything all paid off and uh, no more debt. No more debt. Ooh, I know that, that was right. the arrival. <laughs> that was like, we are here. Finally. That looks like an arrival picture. Yes, it does. And it's structured once again. How he's centered in the middle of everybody. Yeah, very organized. Very detailed. Uh -huh. You can see my father playing oh, outside the building there. He was fresh. 
and he had his uh, what he called the Caracas Gang Avenue right there. So here he's young. Here he's a little bit older. That's him right there. Uh, oh, good. Kind of, kind of cool. Um, of and here's family members standing out in front of the, the building. Nice. Oh, wow. Uh, I might even have a picture of him walking down the street in front of his house on uh, 18 East Arriva Street uh, was the first house where he started making the candies in the basement. Let me look here, find out. It's in here somewhere. Uh, da, da, da. But anyway, you can see I. So, so while you're looking, while you're looking, um, while you're looking for that, um, I just wanted to add in to the people that's watching on Instagram. How you doing? Hey, everybody. You guys, we're gonna have to go to the link on on Facebook later on because you guys tuning in on Instagram. Tell them, Ricky. Um, we're right now we're interviewing Andrew Reese. Um, he is the grandson of um Harry. Reese Burnett, he created the Reese's um, Candy. And we're on Facebook, well, we're on Zoom and we're interviewing him right now, you guys. I just started live on this platform on Instagram. I'm gonna share the links and I've been sharing the links with you guys. I even have the website in my um, link. So you guys can go on my link on my Instagram right now and click on it to Harry Reese's website. To see us live to over there around. as well. But while you're here, let me tell you guys, he is dropping wisdom, integrity, ambition on what it takes to be a real entrepreneur and a man, as well as a family. Yes. Because the stories that he's telling and the things that he's sharing with the untold story, um, it's just, it's, it's amazing, yo. And it relates a lot to what we're going through right now, currently today. And I think that's one of the dope things I'm taking away from this interview Hello, is how everybody. the timing of, uh, you know, everything is mm -hmm. like, you know, because we're in an era right now where we need entrepreneurship yes. and we need uh, America to make money and be productive. You know what and I mean? And I was like, even with this interview and I appreciate Andrew for taking the time, yes. I, the, the story, the fact that it's still an untold story, I feel like it needs to be out there. More people eat this candy. They love it, like you said, it gives love, it makes people smile, laugh, feel good. And I feel like the story behind it is what matters the most of yeah. why the brand is what it is today. Yeah. And all the angels that were there to help assist along the way. So. Yeah, because a lot of people do not know the I story. I encourage everybody they, they, to please. They know the on. candy now. Yes, they know the candy. But, but man, they don't know. the untold story. Yeah. I see why you, is that why you guys titled it The Untold Story, Andrew? Uh, well, the reason I call it the untold story is because no one ever really documented it and, and whatnot. And of course, exactly. which is yeah, unbelievable. you have to realize that, uh, so at the time when I wrote the book, there was 178 family members, <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, the thing with this too, uh, when I wrote the book, uh, you know, basically you, you have to have rights of publicity. All and right. if you don't have rights of publicity, you know, if somebody goes out there and defames your family legacy and so forth, you can't do anything about it if you can't get all 178 people lined up and think in the same way, right? But with the rights right. of publicity, then one person has the ability to go in there and shut them down. And right. uh, it's that one, that one, the rights of publicity is what allows you to do the videos. So when we did the induction, you had to have rights of publicity in order to right. do the induction. And uh, and then the book and everything it kind of brought it all together. So, uh, oh, you know, <laughs> when you when you write the book, uh, you have to realize that you're going to ruffle some people's you know feathers. Yes. Uh, everybody wants to be in the book, this that and the other. But you know, the book is meant to be about uh, the Reese's peanut butter cups. It's a story that was never ever told. And people are always asking, how was it invented? Well, I talk about how it was invented inside the right. book. And I didn't really uh, tell you here on the story, okay? So, uh, but you know, if you go to Hershey, they have a museum called the, the Hershey Story. And understand that they built that museum after my book came out. <laughs> my uh, book had already come out. So it wasn't, okay, it, was it, wasn't a dig on, it wasn't a dig on Hershey or anything like that. I had came out with the name Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, The Untold Story, because no one ever told the story about it. 
And right. this happened a couple of years after it came out. They came out with this museum called the Hershey Story. But the good news is, is when you go into the gift shop at the Hershey Story, they it's are the selling the book. Yay! Okay. That's how it works. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly what up, Carissa? How you doing? Hello, everybody. We, hey, Q. Hey, Carissa. Margie. Thank y'all for chiming yeah, in. Everybody. You know? We're having an amazing time. We're, we're basically having a quarantine Reese's Lockdown. virtual party. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We've been, we've been on it all day, you know, and uh, we're getting, it's like we're in the virtual museum right now yes. with the audio and everything. Seeing because exclusive pictures. Seeing exclusive pictures. History. Getting the wisdom of um, the, the that era that, um, was one of the roughest times in America. Like, yes. you know, um, you know, the depression, that was, if you could make it out of that and become this, that lets you know that you can overcome. You can overcome. Oh, yeah. yeah, a lot of problems. <laughs> so I appreciate you so much, Andrew, for um, having, this is, a, um, this is a PG. Okay. But for having, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> Because it takes that to be able to say, you know what, I'm putting this out and I'm going to let this be told because it needs to be told mm -hmm. because it's going to do so much for people. Like it inspired, it's, it's inspiring me. You know what I mean? The candy inspired me just I to mean. be greedy. But <laughs> now you are feeding me this. And then just really quick, I want to touch on something real quick that you said earlier. Um, Because, you know, the whole martial art things, I'm amazed by that. So mm -hmm. from eight to 14, um, you you studied and then you also became, you used the study of what you were studying between eight and 14. And then you went to the military at 17. So I'm looking at the time frame, <laughs> you know, and what I'm getting at is, um, you pretty much been having to uh, be a student of defense for since a, since a, you're like a Michael Jackson of uh, you know uh, I'm I'm talking about American soldier not as a performer or anything but I'm saying the way that he studied in music you had to do that for defense and safety precautions and whatnot and what I want to know is if you could go back to the 17 year old. 18 year old child of yourself and give yourself some wisdom that you have now, what would it be? Oh, mute, mute, mute. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom, uh, yeah, okay. you need, yeah, can you hear me now? So you yeah, need, you need to be that drive, initiative, and persistence, right? And so uh, the thing is, is to pick your path, and it's like playing Mahjong. If you ever play Mahjong, you got to decide what numbers you're going to go off and do right off the start uh, and, and go towards that. But uh, because I had a focus at a very young age, and, I, uh, and I've wrote that, I've parlayed, and I've been building upon it, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Do you want me to give you an example of what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. I understand that uh, I'm a very detail oriented. Uh, I, I won't say that I'm obsessive. I'm just very detail oriented, very analytical. Uh, I love to learn. You know, right. I, I like to learn anything. So learning martial arts and, and understanding that stuff to me is, is fantastic. I love wow. doing that stuff. So uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here. Here's a Zoom. I'm gonna kind of go off over here and I'm gonna bring up a, a web page. And this is my biography, right? And so it's my curriculum and it kind of goes in and starts going through and talks about my career and what I do. Now, I'm gonna go down to the bottom here, going down through all the things I've I done over the years. I was going away when I saw this before. <laughs> now, what I want you to see is my prom. Oh, there's a microphone. If you click on that, uh, here I'll, I'll just open it up. And what that does, it takes you to a list of all the songs that I do. Um, Whoa! Wow! Yeah, y'all. Yeah, just, just a so so 
Just so let me set them up. Let me set them up, Andrew. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I got to prep them for this for those that's just chiming in. Um, so not only is he a martial artist and he's um, uh, analytical, I'm going to, he's a lot of things, but you guys, with all those skills that he has, in the martial arts, in the business aspect, from his family being, you know, who they are and whatnot. He's also a singer. <laughs> he also is a guitar, like a really drive. good singer too, not just I like the know. piano. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I've so heard it. That was a long one, song list, by the way. Yeah, so this kind of goes back through, uh, well, that's more than 40 years, wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah. but, you know, you have uh, digital certificates, right? Certified, um, um, yeah. Wow, you've been going yeah. beast mode. Yeah, but when you when you go into this and you click on it, so now right. like here's Fortinet, uh, which is one of the vendors, but here's mm -hmm. all, all the certificates and everything going down and through there. Security, wow. cyberspace. Yeah, so you can click on these and, and zoom in on it, right. and then, so that it comes up. But you can you guys, I'm going to be resharing this link so you guys can go check out his so Zoom, yeah, you you run a Zoom better than me. I, <laughs> <laughs> and I was talking to a friend of mine, and I was like, you got to get up to speed, brother. You got to learn this stuff. And you over here just flying pictures, Zoom, Zoom. Like, you can tell that you're analytical and understand this yes, stuff. Yes, and that's amazing. Yeah. yeah, so when you're looking at this one, uh, you look at how many certificates there are just on this page. Wow. And, and there's multiple pages just on this page. And this page is FBI. one of six. So you go down through them and then there's more on it. And then you go into the individual products. And uh, like I was showing you when, you, when you go into this, there's just years and years of, uh, of yeah. this. When you go in, it, it's nonstop. It you know, is. Education. I was blown away when I first saw this. I was like, wow. Hard yeah, work. You know, when you have what's called continuing education, right? So you always got to up your skills and stay on top you of have things. Right. And this is just stuff that I have on here, but on LinkedIn, I also do a bunch of courses on LinkedIn as well. Now, wow. Uh, but people say, well, you know, where do you find the time to do all these things? Well, there's a, one point in my life where I was writing the book, I was a, a, a realtor. Uh, I had my martial arts school, an actual school, and I was running a security practice for a major corporation with 48,000 employees as wow. their security practice lead. All right. So uh, my, my time, <laughs> Get it able, if, if I'm able to find the time, well, what's your problem? Exactly. We're going to replay that. If I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had an Insta You heard him. If he can find the time, what's your problem? Yeah. Get on your grind because it's, no it's, it's all, it's all about, about your focus. If you don't want to put the focus in it, then you're not. What's what's your problem? Not. What are you trying to, you know, uh, it all depends on where you're trying to spend your time and, and what you're doing. But I, I, you can talk to my brother. You can talk to my other family members. I spend a lot of time with everybody. Uh, yeah. But I also, I manage my time and I, I have, I manage my objectives. I know what right. I want to get done and I, I work it toward it. Right. And, and and that comes from your being like instilled in you early at a young age, and you think it developed as it, as you went along. Yeah, but you were seeing infrastructure and order at a young age anyway. Yeah, to start so, learning yeah. martial arts at eight. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's gonna you knew detail and all this matter. Yeah. And I and I paid out of my own pocket to have uh, executive coaches go through okay. and analyze me and teach me about being an executive and, and doing different things. Yeah, you have to invest in yourself. Right. Okay. So, uh, right. If, you know, who's better to invest in than yourself? Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, there might be a thing, well, hey, you know, I got to pay money out. I want my company to pay for it. Well, well wait a minute. If it's really that important to you, you might want to spend the money yourself too, whether the company is going to do it or not, if it's that's the goal that you're trying to do. But on, on, on LinkedIn, uh, if you go out on LinkedIn, I have all kinds of stuff up on LinkedIn. Let me see if I can bring that up real quick. So if I- uh, We're gonna uh, definitely be resharing all this yeah. for you guys, so well, y'all can- Yeah, not only are we gonna definitely reshare it, but they can also, they're getting to see a lot right yeah, now. Yeah, they're getting like, to see a lot. Guys getting to see his LinkedIn page. Whoever just tuned in and everything, we're gonna make sure y'all can- Yeah. Play, play it back and- 
Yeah, because um, some people that's watching from Instagram, they can't um, see, the see everything. The so they hear the audio, but they can't really see the I'll be sharing it with you guys on Instagram and putting it in a link and everything. I promise you guys, y'all going to get to see this. In, in, in but if you want to leave while we're still here and go to Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash Real Online Network. Yeah. That, that's, that's where we're at. Yeah, man, this is amazing, though. Security and compliance. Chief information security officer. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. This is a lot of hard work. And, um, amazing. Yeah. You've been pushing it to the limit. <laughs> We can we we can see, but we can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. All right. So as I scroll down to this, uh, a lot of people Look, ask about you guys for Instagram. Yeah. So you know, if people ask me, you know, how do I get into the profession doing the stuff you do? So I have articles that I've written here that talks about how you start off and how you get in into the business. Right. So yeah, a lot of people uh, don't know. Right. So I go through that. And of course, this is a picture of my basement of my house in uh, Pennsylvania. I had a cry school. There's my there's my samurai. I see. Oh, Gary, he just said he saw yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> see my skeleton hanging in the closet. Oh, the, Does the skeleton have a name? Yeah, uh, the skeleton, his name is Mr. Dumois. Spelled <laughs> I do have a name. Yeah, D-U-M-M-Y. Dumb, dummy. dummy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try to do. I try to get all sophisticated. I was like, do <laughs> Dummy. Dummy. <laughs> dummy. <laughs> I was like, dummy. <laughs> yeah, so, I, so I, I was like a, here's a story where I talk about uh, uh, it was uh, Air Force Logistics Command, uh, which is up in Wright Patterson Air Force Base, and. Uh, Basically, they were having a problem with the system, and I went in there and I did all kinds of troubleshooting. And there was like a minimum bill that I would bill somebody for four hours, a minimum, right? Right. Uh, so if I fixed it within an hour, you would get hit for four hours of work. Well, yeah. you know, I could leave and be really profitable if I wanted to, right? But then the customers right. would feel like they were shafted. So uh, I would actually do a lot more. So in this particular case, I went through and. Uh, you know, I did all kinds of stuff to the system. I took it all apart. I cleaned all the filters. I checked the power supplies. I made sure there was no ripple in the power uh, quality that was going through there. I made sure that uh, all the patches were applied and everything. And, and unbeknownst to me, the guy who was overseeing, and this is a facility that was like three football fields long of every supercomputer you can think of in this facility. Wow. And uh, so I took it apart and put it back together. And I didn't find anything wrong, but the guy ended up sending a, a letter to the president of the company. He goes, I don't know what Mr. Reese did, but this computer has never worked as well as it does now. And I didn't really do anything to the system. <laughs> because I went to, you know, uh, he thought it was uh, like I did all kinds of stuff. So sometimes you just need to go that extra mile, show somebody that you care and give them their money's worth, right? right. Exactly, exactly. That's real, no. man. That's more wisdom. He's he's that's 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 uh, those are jewels right there. Now this is my company, uh, Reese Webb. So I've had several companies I started myself. Uh, one was called Reese Webb, and we had the uh, Aimnet Solutions. I don't know. And I Reese think about Spider Man when he say Reese that. Webb. Not, Reese Webb Security. I know because of the web. Yeah, yeah. the web world. Can you notice notice the hair there? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Lost on them. Now this guy right here, uh, his name is John Seitzinger. His his Je grandfather was the chief financial officer for Hershey Foods. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, and, and guess what? He ended up working for me, and he never even knew who I was. And when he started working for me, and then he finds out that I'm a Reese from the actual Reese family, and <laughs> he's working for me. And his father, his grandfather, was the chief financial officer for Hershey Foods at the time. Wow, wow that's deep. Well. See the connection yeah. kept going. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
So there's a lot of stuff I have in here where I, I teach people uh, how to get in the career. I talk about submarines. Obviously, I don't have pictures of, of anything. Uh, don't want to go to jail. Right. right. Uh, so, right. so, so, when you were in the military, you went to the navy. Yeah, I was a submariner. Yeah, I was the oh, guy. Okay. Who pushed, I was the guy who pushed the button for nuclear missiles. Wow. <laughs> nice. I worked, I was what they call a fire control technician, ballistic missile. Wow. Wow. Right. Woo. And, so you had you you basically have a lot of hats that you. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, a lot, a lot of neat things in here, uh, you know, for people to learn about. Uh, it's uh, to me, it's all fun. Yeah. So. Whoa. Um, okay. um, Andrew, your brother said that you um, had an uncle Rip Ripon who was inducted in the Candy Hall of Fame in nineteen seventy two. Nice. The Candy Hall of Fame in nineteen seventy two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rip ripping. So that yeah, that's been going on for a Yeah, yeah. So we had a we had an uncle who who did that as well. Uh, so it's been a candy hall of fame going on. Oh, I didn't know you were eight. See, you're a very humble guy. Um, you're an eight degree grandmaster. Grandmaster. Of yeah. course you could beat me up. <laughs> <laughs> like I got a, yeah. I'm not an eight degree. I'm not an eight. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about my ranks and my martial arts and stuff. <laughs> I do yeah. know some though. My, my father, he did teach me a lot. He was uh, well, you know, military and um, from study heavily in martial arts. But I'm about not. I'm not about to name any of my degrees or any level compared to an eighth degree grandmaster. That part. <laughs> that part. I need to learn some things or two, especially the hand thing you said that was the weakest. Yeah, that's I've had the weakest part of the body. Approach me, yeah. and I need to <laughs> the peanut butter <laughs> finger. The butterfinger. <laughs> the butter the real butter 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 finger. <laughs> that technique. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't lay a hand on my butterfinger. <laughs> you, 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 um, this has been awesome, yo. Yes, just uh, don't eat all the chicken. Let me make sure. Boy, anybody got any questions? <laughs> yeah, let me <laughs> let me um look real quick. You had me gone. I was in the zone for a minute there because um your resume is very, very impressive. Like you you Hi, definitely Tiffany and Danny. I can't see who all in here. You definitely um you know following I don't want to say following the footsteps, but you definitely, you know what I mean? The integrity and the ambition that your family has is definitely there in you like you can see that clearly and yeah, brad yeah, you guys y'all are amazing are and for people that um we have the pleasure of actually knowing him and be like like you know i want to say friends if that's cool um, <laughs> cool dude like you know what i'm saying a cool person humble like you know what i'm saying very assertive as well like you know you know how you got to see if someone's gonna do what they say they're gonna do uh -huh. This guy does what he says. He keeps it real, and that's why we put you real. on the real online network. Yeah, real is rare. Real you is know? rare. <laughs> yeah, and he definitely keeps yeah. it real. Like he follows up. There's a thing, the saying in the business: there's there's a lot of talkers. A lot of people will talk, and then there's those that just do. Yeah. Right? And you know, I, I've helped out a lot of people in my life where. Uh, you know, I've opened my house to homeless people that they mm -hmm. lived in my awesome. house for a year and a half. Uh, wow. I've given I've given the entire contents of my house to people. Wow. All the furniture, all of the bedroom, the the uh, uh, silverware, the china, everything. Right. I mean, the entire contents in two 26 foot truckloads. So wow. it, it's it's not it's not like uh, I haven't helped people out in my life. But, right. You know, but people need to understand, even though, you know, I got the last name Reese, uh, mm -hmm. I've had zero money given to me. I paid my own way through school. That's how it be. <laughs> you know, so and uh, you can look at my own background. You can't say, well, it was the name that made you who you were. No, it's, you know, it was my drive, my initiative. Your drive. Right. Because it's a double-edged sword. You realize that, right? <laughs> 
double-edged yeah. sword. When you got the name, people think, well, you know, you, are, you, don't, you don't need any money. You don't need any help, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, right. people will use you and there, there's all kinds of stuff. But, right. you know, when you, when you uh, got to make it and you got to do it on your own, you know, then there's something to be said for that. Is that? Yes. yes. And you feel good about it. Right. You know what I mean? Nothing. Like, you know, it was, you did it. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's a pride that comes with that. You know, because if you build your own um, infrastructure and things, it can last longevity. So. so one of the things that my grandfather did is uh, he would help out homeless as well. So That's back amazing. in those days, they would put uh, draw a little symbol up on the telephone poles. Mm -hmm. And that would signify a house that would feed somebody who was homeless, who didn't have any food or any meals. Oh, wow. And he would feed. He would also give people a job if they needed a job. Right. A true angel. Yeah, because yeah, back then they didn't have um like what we have today, you know, they didn't have shelters the same way, you know, um right. back then. So that, that makes sense. So why they would, you know, show call something. Them, yeah. yeah, show sure. something that will help. Yeah, we can all have good, trouble man. at some point in our lives, you know, it can happen to anybody, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we I've been there, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, I've this, been there. Uh, this particular thing that's going on is going to be yeah, you're gonna have people who've uh, had major money and it's you know, here today, gone tomorrow, right? I've heard the stories yeah. and everything, so I know. And yeah, yeah, all different sides of homelessness. Yeah, it's it's a, just has somebody earned the money and, and built up millions or billions or whatever kinds of money that they built up, uh, it doesn't mean that the descendants will be able to follow those footsteps. You Not know, at all. that is so uh, true. Ooh. Preach. Uh, yeah, and, and 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 um some people some people think that, you know, yeah, what I'm saying, like he said, this automatically they think because you're associated, you. even even if you don't have the name, but you're associated like in this industry or something, they'll be like, Well, you know so and so and you know so and so so yeah. you know what I mean? And they don't understand the hard work that it takes to just maintain, you know what I'm saying, exactly. to maintain what you're working on. And right. each project is separate and different sometimes, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like um, like you got a lot going on, Andrew. Like you know, the martial arts that takes a whole nother focus than what this book takes. And then you, like you said, you have to time management is key to be able to put you know things in the proper perspective at the proper time to right. get the proper results. You know what I mean? Exactly. Well, one, yeah. one of the questions you asked me, you know, about beating somebody up and and uh, you know what can people do? Do you know who the most dangerous person is in a classroom, a martial arts classroom? It's the white belt. He's the most dangerous person in that room. Is that why? Because he haven't learned discipline. He doesn't know his strength. Doesn't know how how to do something. You know, he's more of a danger to the black belt than the black belt is to the white belt. I see exactly what you mean. I don't. I do because <laughs> the black belt has understood a lot. Like you know, say more structure and timing and stuff like that. A white belt is like a. Uh, like the fish, like the fish pit thing you used to describe, where I made mean, the wolf eat in the pit. He's oh. hungrier and he don't have no kind of structure, right, so he can be quicker to kill or something. You, know, or something. you can make a mistake or something, yeah. right? I Pretty guess. Like, you know, and then here's another thing, you know, I try to explain to people is that a lot of times people know more than what they think they know, they just <laughs> lack the confidence. Mm. And so, they, they, they don't have the confidence in their abilities and therefore they, they doubt their ability to carry something through and that's what holds mm -hmm. them back. And, and right. sometimes you just need to go and just have faith that, that it, you know, it, it's your drive, your initiative that will push you through it more Is than, that than true? You yeah. know, if I, uh, what differentiates you from somebody else is the person who will write the book who will go through the research and find out what it takes. Because writing a book about the history, because you can be sued if you say something yeah. wrong or you mistake yeah. something. Taste the right recipe. <laughs> so you have to kind of pull it all together. You got to go do the research, go through all the right. archives, pull the newspapers. You got to go get other wow. people who, who uh, specialize in history and get them to look up stuff and, and, and right. trace it all back. And then you got to have your documentation all in a row. Okay. Right. But see, now you can't always put everybody who wants to be in the book 
unless you get their permission, you know, permission. Yeah. Their likeness, yes. Yeah, there, there's yeah. certain things and there's certain photographs that you can put in there that are copyrighted and some that aren't and this right. and the other. Uh, yeah. There's ways to make that, you know, if it's educational, it's a different thing. Yeah. Right. So uh, it's even understanding the rights of publicity and, and what its purpose is and how it works. And right. um, so, I don't know, people just got to do their homework. Right? Yeah. Exactly. They have to be persistent. What makes a black belt? Persistence. Persistence. <laughs> persistence. Exactly. Patience, persistence. Okay. Right. What makes you good at doing uh, security? Persistence. Because you're right. not going to learn it all at once. You know, you can't go from point A to point B Impossible. overnight. You have to put, in the Navy, we called it earning your stripes. Earning right. your stripes, y'all. You have to. It ain't no jumping from A to, to B in one night. You have to. It's a process and you have to be patient, like he said. And enjoy the process. And enjoy you it. Know, enjoy the journey. The setbacks. Process. A lot of people because, see because you fail at something that you are a failure, but a lot of people don't realize the more you fail at something, you're able to realize what it was so you can get it better. Yeah. And know the mistakes not to keep repeating it. So. So let's yeah. wrap this up. I know one of the questions yes. that you always yeah. ask me or ask your your uh, your uh, interviewees, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you ask them if you had to put something up on the billboard, what would yours state? Yes. So my my billboard would state, enjoy the journey. You know, as you're going through it, look around, enjoy the journey. Exactly. Because that's what it is, is a journey. And then we can leave it at that, okay? Thank That's you. a great way to end the show. We can't end it without us uh, telling you it was an honor. A very good. Very this honor. was amazing. Um, we're, we're so thankful for you taking out the time to share this with us. Brad, thank you. Yeah, thank your thank entire you family. Your thank, family. Thank you, grandfather. Yes, you. <laughs> hey, and thank, uh, eat more. Grandmama, thank you. I did, thank you. <laughs> Eat more peanut butter cups. Eat more peanut butter cups. Is that? Yeah. No, I'm over here yeah. empty. <laughs> and, and if you want to read the book, please go get the book. There's, you can get it hardback, right. soft, soft cover, hard cover, or, or ebook. Okay. Okay. And we'll make sure they got the links, you guys. Thanks for tuning in, Andrew Reese. Once again, I appreciate it. We Salute appreciate to you guys. You. And we'll Every we'll holler back, Andrew. Thank you for this, man. And you have a rest, rest of the night. Y'all take care. You Good too. Sir. Thank you. Bye bye. Peace. Enjoy the journey. Thank you everybody for tuning in to my Instagram. I know you guys didn't catch the whole thing, but the whole thing is live and we're going to be putting it up so everybody can watch. Well, we might as well, before well, we're not cutting off yet because we're still live on Facebook. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna do what they call um, the summary, the wrap up. The wrap up. Yeah, okay. now we can talk about what we got from it. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, I probably got chocolate on my. Do I got chocolate on my face? Mm, I don't know. No, oh. you could. You could. Then the light went off. The story was so good, y'all. I got a light in here. I had the light off the whole it's time. It's okay. At least I you thought didn't I was in a movie everything. theater. You like heard man. everything. So. Yeah, man. It was dark. My bad, y'all. Yeah. It was dark on some of the cameras, but <laughs> yeah. So okay, we're gonna, you know, let's do a wrap up. Um, so what's the wrap up? Okay. We pretty much got what I got. This is what I took away from everything that he uh, provided. You know what I'm saying? As far as like him sharing that kind hey, of Molly. history. What's up, Molly? We're doing a wrap up because we just did a dope interview with Andrew Reese's from the Reese's family. And um, we're doing a wrap up. What I got from it what you get? was the integrity of uh, helping people yeah. enjoy something or do something, doing something to make a difference. Um, if you look at Brad's comment, when Brad was talking about he didn't do it to- um, Or to be rich. Rich? Yeah. I think he was passionate about it. He like was he, passionate. Yeah, yeah. He liked it to see people smile, feel good, happy, taste good chocolate. Yeah. And you could tell he had a love for it, like, love, you know? Yeah. Because for you to, you know, get up every day and then bring your whole family home. And really allow right other people's like, families to have somewhere to go to make yeah, money. Yeah, help the community. It's like, well, amazing. Yeah. Hello. Peace and almighty to you, too. 
CAG major. What it do, CA? Is it? Let's see. CAG major. What it do? What it do? So yeah, um, I got that from it. Um, I got. I'm gonna uh, you know chime in anytime you co-host, but you also yeah. host with the most. I mean, I'm feeling like you said, and I'm I, I, like what I got from it was basically like you said, if you be consistent, persistent, you can become something or be something amazing. If you want to do anything, like he said, some people don't understand the skill sets that they have or even know what they can do fully. Right. You have to really know and, and, and tell yourself that it starts with your mind state. So I basically got out of this whole conversation that it starts with in. If you want to be able to accomplish anything and help others and be a change and, and see other people happy and yourself as well, you have to it starts with in your and, mind state. Yeah, and not and, what I definitely got from this. Yeah, and I got that you don't give up because they they established this company, you know, the, the uh, Reese's candy that we all love today. They they established it to um not giving up. Not you know giving I mean? up. Building because the it was times. Important. It was times that they were supposed to give up because it was a war going on. It was depression. You know what the I mean? chocolate was melting because it was hot. They didn't have no air conditioner back in the day. Right. They had all kind of reasons to say forget it, but kept going. You know, and you're gonna get things that's gonna be like falling out of place, but you're gonna have to always figure it out and and find solutions and pay attention to details. I got that too today. Yeah. You really have to pay attention to details yeah. and put in the work and, yeah. and keep it. Because in that picture, they had a picture with all white uniforms all on white. in the chocolate factory. In the chocolate you know factory. I mean? and and see no you, chocolate on our shoes or anything. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like Everybody was on the same uniform. accord. Yeah, <laughs> coordinating and everything. Teamwork. So the story was amazing. And, um, you know, he just gave us some of it. The book gives yes, us a lot more insight. definitely have to check out this book. And it's amazing. I, I let him, you know, I got to see about Brad. I want to know. I want to talk about Brad, Joe. Mm -hmm. We got to do another segment of this to see if we can get Brad. Brad was dropping jewels in the comments, Joe. So yes, we I would love have to, to try to get Brad, too. But, um, yeah, so, and then this is this is the last thing I'll say that I... Okay, this is... You stay safe, too, Brad, and thank you, thank guys. Thank you again, Brad. He's a self-made man, and his success he created from hard work and total dedication. dedication. Yes, y'all, dedication is key. Facts. Hard work pays off. You see that. Y'all saw it with it, your own eyes. Andrew took us through the history, his accolades, his successes. He got so many things. He showed you guys that y'all have 24 hours a day just as well, and it's all about what you're going to do within those 24 hours. Complaining and all that is not what's going to make things manifest for you. So right now, even while we're on lockdown, quarantine, whatever this is, get it's busy. time to get busy. Yeah. And you have to, you know what I'm saying, stop hesitating and contemplating on if it's bright or if the makeup popping and all this other kind of stuff. We have to be able to be creative and stop making excuses. Dedication <laughs> is key. Right. Not saying anybody's making excuses, but for those who are, you know what I'm saying? I talk to a lot of people. I do readings and stuff for people. I help people, like Andrew said, on your life journey and your path. You have to know which direction you're going in. And if you mess up or you fail, keep going. And that's what I got from this. Yeah. And I got um, that that's how greatness happens. Greatness because happens. Because greatness happens when you can um, leave footprints for other people to be great. Yes. You know what I mean? Because I'm looking exactly. at I'm looking at um, the greatness that their grandfather did and how it was passed down. You know what exactly. I mean? And they had a blueprint. Right. You know what I'm saying? And if you leave that blueprint there, then someone else could come and use that blueprint. You know what I mean? Exactly. Because like Andrew said, zero dollars was made. He he put all his own hard earnings into it. He didn't make it or become successful or whatever he did because of his name. You still have to put in the work. I don't care if your last name, whatever it is, yeah, or whoever your family member is, you still have to. Nobody, push. yeah, no matter what your last name is or who you are, um, or someone else that might have done something, if you don't have the work, it's, it's not going to be nothing anyway. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? That's what faith is. You know what I'm saying? They say faith is what without uh, without works is dead. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So how you make faith live is putting in that work. And this is the real online network. The real online network, you guys. And I love Reese's. Oh, 
if y'all haven't tried the new Reese's, I don't know if it's new, but the peanut butter cookies, oh, they are banging. They are oh, delicious. Yeah. I woke up at 4 a.m. in the morning to bake my cookies because I forgot that I didn't bake them before I went to sleep. So, you know, check those out too. And we're going to be sharing the links for the book and everything, you guys. Please do check it out. He said it's going to be in an ebook form soon. And I'm praying we see a movie off of this because I want a dope chocolate Reese's movie to show who created it and where it came from and all that. I need to, I need to see a movie. Ain't nothing like sitting in there eating. Share your social there. media info. Um, he actually shared. We're definitely gonna share it. We're definitely gonna be sharing we'll, all the links. Yeah, we'll share it to you. I have a link in my um, IG right now to the Asher Harry Reese's Burnett website. Back. As well, the book and everything is on there, so you can click on the link in my bio and go check it out. And the yeah. book and everything is there. The, the website. In the history. The website is realonlinenetwork.com. The Facebook is Facebook forward slash real online network dot com. I mean real online network news. And we're just starting this real online network mm -hmm. page. I put it in the feed for you guys already. Yeah. Too, so. And we're just starting the Facebook page. So all the like and support and shares will help as well. You know what I mean? Um we doing it for the information, you know what I mean? Um and uh be like, get out of my face. No, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm saying here. don't ignore the. Uh, no, you're I'm right. <laughs> I'm over here in her Instagram, y'all. She like, if you look at your crowd, get out my crowd. No, I'm not saying it like that. But you guys, I I appreciate everybody um joining in. Um, I wish we had enough Reese's to share with all you guys. Um, I told um Mr. Key that. You know what I'm saying? We want to do a little something where we, you know what I'm saying, start giving away some Reese's candy or something to you guys for just showing appreciation and support. And everybody who shared this today and um, took the initiative, we appreciate everybody's support, everybody who took the time to chime in. I know you guys were blown away because I was blown away by all of the history and looking at all of the beautiful products and the basketball and the beautiful golf bag i'm talking about that golf bag was a classic i mean i loved it yeah brad, i really appreciate him for showing that yeah That's brad great. was like show the golf bag again yeah show the like, you know the golf bag is swag it is dope <laughs> he was like bag. show the golf bag again Ooh. yeah because he had the he had the for those that didn't see it he had the reese's golf bag and it was like chocolate you know y'all will get to because it, it was live so y'all yeah. definitely got to go back and play this film you know, interview again yeah. on real online network on facebook.com i shared the link down there and um i like i said if anybody want to dm me just share the links directly i can do that as well if you don't know how to click on it on my profile and like i said i appreciate everybody for tuning in yep and i don't know if mr key got anything else but i appreciate everybody spreading my love no nah, i'm gonna end it right there you know what I'm saying dope show appreciate everybody RealOnlineNetwork.com. Y'all support. You know what I'm saying? Just click like. And I was going to end with playing my peanut butter Reese Ricky song, but you guys, I've been promoting it and yeah. I promoted it today. So y'all go click like and share that too because it's a dope song. It's and, about the candy. And I it's, love it. it's featured on the, the uh, page. It's on also the on the um, like page for um, Harry Reese Burnett. Thank you, yeah. Andrew, for supporting it. And sharing it on there, and it's a recipe with that song too. So if you click on it, you're gonna find out how to make some dope cookies. Right, facts. And then um, I made some cookies. Remember, I made um, some peanut butter cookies. You didn't eat them. I ate them though. No, it I was remember. a little chocolate. You know what I'm saying? I tried to make some um, the Reese's, the new ones. But, uh, we seen them. We came in with we the store. She had made her own, and it was uh, pretty good. I tasted yours, but. She didn't like mine. But mine was a little crispy. It was just a, even taste did you taste them? You uh -huh. didn't taste them. You didn't even want them. You just looked at them. She's like, your, your cookies are dark skin. You know what I'm saying? So she was a little hating on me because my <laughs> cookies were dark skin. Oh, it wasn't burnt, y'all. It was dark skin. <laughs> Thank you but, all. Yeah. Shout out, man. We out, right? Oh, y'all. Y'all like my troll shirt? Who grew up on troll? I grew up on troll. I just wanted to rock my troll Is today. That me? Because you know it'd be people Don't trolling like me, yo. online. I, people would be trolling, but thank trolling. God we had good images today. And I appreciate everybody. I troll sometimes. You don't troll? I don't troll. I just roll.
Okay. Real <laughs> Online Network. Thank y'all. Peace. Peace out.